Welcome to the Long Point Region Conservation Authority's 29th Annual Memorial Forest Dedication Service. I'm Mike Columbus, Chairman of the Long Point Region Conservation Authority, and it's my privilege to join you today in a format that has been much more common over the past year and a half. Today we gather to celebrate and remember 113 loved ones for whom donations were made over the past year. While we reflect, Brenda Atkinson, Joe Rohr, and Jody Dedrick will be lending us their time and talent in the form of musical performances, and lay worship leader Phyllis Buchner will share some spiritual words for the occasion as we celebrate lives lived and times shared. The trees planted this year join nearly three decades of fond memories. The Memorial Forest, located at the entrance of the Bacchus Heritage Conservation Area, is a natural growing moment, monument to those we love, a gift to the future in the name of those who shaped our past. Now to begin our dedication service, I am pleased to welcome lay worship leader Phyllis Buchner. Welcome to this Memorial Forest service. Holy One, we pause now in prayer as we gather during the challenges of COVID-19. Physically distant and yet one with each other in our pursuit of honoring the past. May words and music offer some comfort and support as we celebrate lives lived and this memorial forest dedication. Amen. Margaret Mead was a, a popular author and speaker. I invite you to hear these words from her piece entitled, <clears throat> Remember Me. For the living, I am gone. To the sorrowful, I will never return. To the angry, I was cheated. But to the happy, I am at peace. And to the faithful, I have never left. Remember me in your hearts and your thoughts. Remember the times we cried, we fought, and the times we laughed. For when you remember me, I will never be gone. Let us pause. Loving one, we gather in sorrow, but with great joy and thanksgiving in our hearts. As we remember those who have gone before us, those who contributed to our diversity in families and communities, may our memories offer us encouragement and comfort. Amen. <clears throat> I offer you this scripture from the gospel according to Matthew. This comes to us as an invitation. Reading from Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30. Jesus said, Come to me all that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Our second reading comes to us from one of the wisdom books in the Bible, from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 to 8, from the New King James Version. To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a 
a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. May God bless these words to our further understanding. During these trying times, it has been difficult to offer our sincere condolences to those who mourn. Funeral home visitation restrictions have not allowed us to do as we have in the past, to offer a hug or our hands in friendship. We live in a time of change. We have heard and read these words. A celebration of life will take place at a later date. For some, this is the time. This is the place. As seasons change, we always have the weather to talk about. And as we know, this year has brought some water challenges. April was dry. What happened to those perennial April showers, we wondered. And in late July and August, it looked as if they had finally arrived. The capabilities of water are easy to ignore, but know that it is vital to all forms of life. And despite being soft and humble, it can cut through rock because of its patience and persistence. Does that remind you of anyone? The quiet, persistent one? The determined one? Water can cut through rock or form a path around the obstacles. Some of the people we named today had to find a new way. They had to find new paths. And water is always working, whether it's in the form of rain or flowing streams or in the depths of bays and lakes and rivers. Erosion happens under the right conditions and in order to counteract the possible damage, trees can be planted. They manage runoff and their leaf canopy helps reduce the impact of falling rain. Their roots soak up the excess water and stabilize the soil. Amazing examples of the benefits of trees. And tree planting is a blessing. This conservation authority plants trees on behalf of others as a living testimony to lives lived, services offered, and family and friends cared for. The tree is the biggest plant on the earth. They provide oxygen, reduce air temperatures, clean the air and the atmosphere, and reduce pollution, all the while reducing heat on the Earth's surface. They have earned the description, a mighty feat of nature. And trees do, through their seasons, struggle against the forces around them, wind and bugs and lightning strikes and viruses, and snow, actually all the elements. I wonder how many people named today struggled against forces they had no control over. When a tree suffers an injury, guard cells grows around the area, around the scar. 
isolating it from the surrounding living wood, allowing the tree to continue to grow. How many of the people we honor carried scars and wounds? Did they bear the marks, the scars, but continued to carry on, continued to grow? In our Matthew text message, Jesus spoke to people who were desperately trying to find God. He offered the invitation to come and offered to lighten, to ease their burdens, not eliminate but to share and to care about and to encourage them. This scripture reading brings us a promise of safety, security, companionship, love, understanding, care, and concern. And know this, we are not alone. Eternity and abundant blessings are ours and those who have gone before us. Whether you are overburdened or whether you are the weary one, there is peace and hope for each of us. Blue eyes crying in
Gone on, my friends, and I loved yesterday. Gone home. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. The songbird that sings in the dell seems to say, Gone home. Gone home. They've joined heaven before. They're walking the streets of pure gold. They've left one by one when the roof care was done. Gone home, gone home. Life here is lonesome, so safe gone before me. Gone home, gone home. The old weeping willow that stands by the door. Seems to say, gone, gone home. They join the heavenly home. They're walking the streets of pure gold. They've left one by one when the work here was done. Gone home. Gone home. Trumpets will sound on that great judgment day. Gone home. They have gone home. Gone home. They have gone home. Meet all the loved ones who've gone on that way. Gone home. They have gone home. Gone they home. They have gone home. They've they joined the heavenly home. They're walking the streets of pure gold. Left one by one when the work here was done. Gone home. It has been said we have the opportunities to make choices. We can close our eyes and pray our loved ones will come back or open our eyes to see all that they left to us. Our hearts can be empty or we can be full of love that was shared. We can turn our backs on tomorrow and live yesterday or be happy for tomorrow because of yesterday. We can be thankful for lives lived and love shared. May it be so. Planting trees is an amazing way to remember the life of a friend or a loved one. Planting trees also assures a better environment for years to come, a living legacy. Let us pause. Holy One, this may be a final tribute, but it is not final. Every day we will celebrate in some way the absolute and incredible fortune of having family and friends in our lives. We remember the storytellers, the bakers, the farmers, the listeners, the advisors, the patient and quiet ones. We remember the great huggers. We remember those who volunteered and those who set examples of good judgment examples of courage and integrity. In silence now, we name our loved ones we no longer see but hold in our hearts. Gracious one, one generation plants a tree so the next generation will see a living memorial grow and blossom and spread its branches out to the world. We dedicate these trees today as a living memorial to all those who have gone before us. Amen and amen. Friends, may you be rooted and grounded in peace and hope. May you be blessed and be a blessing to others.
I bid you peace. Shalom. That wraps up today's virtual dedication service. I would like to thank everyone for nearly 30 years of support for the Memorial Forest Program. This forest, located here at the entrance of the Bacchus Heritage Conservation Area, represents decades of remembrance. The forest will remain and grow and continue to foster memories, new and old, for many more decades to come. While we are unable to hold an in-person dedication service this year, the Memorial Forest remains a location anyone may visit at their leisure. I hope those who choose to visit find it an enjoyable place to relax and reflect upon those for whom these trees were planted. Thank you for sharing a moment, moment of memory today. Although tears all fill my eyes, I'm happy in my soul. I'm thinking of my friends who walk the streets of gold. Since Jesus called them home to live up there with him, I cannot bring